Hi, welcome to Harsha Training's new channel. Please subscribe to our new channel. From today onwards, we will be posting interview videos in this channel. If you are not yet subscribed to our channel, please subscribe it now. Today, our interview topic is on validations. So, let's get into our session. Hi, Harsha. Hi. Today, our interview session is on validations. Okay. So, let's move on to our session. Okay, sure. Uh, the first question is, what are the types of validations in programming languages? And please explain those. Okay. So, in general, we have two types of validations, client side validation and server side validation. Client side validation means the validation logic that gets executed on the browser itself like HTML, JavaScript level and returns the validation errors. That is client side validation. Server side validation means the validation logic gets executed uh, like on the application server end. So, the request from the browser will go to application server. Application server executes the validation logic and responds back with the error messages like that and that is server side validation. Okay, the next question is what are the rules which we use for validations in Pega? Okay, so in Pega we have three different types of rules for validation purpose. The first one is rule edit validate and the second one is rule obj validate we also call it as validate rule and the third one is part of declarative rules which is declare constraint rule. All of these three rules we can use for validation purpose. Each of the rule is going to evaluate the conditions and all and it is going to return an error message accordingly. Okay, the next question, what are the differences between OBJ validate and edit validate? Okay, so the rule OBJ validate and rule edit validate, the differences are, so rule edit validate, we need to write Java source code and while coming to the rule OBJ validate, there is no need to write any Java coding, but it provides functions. We can make use of the functions. And coming to the second difference, in rule edit validate, we are going to write the logic related generic property. Generically, we are going to write. In rule edit validate, we will directly use the property names that we are going to use in the form. And moreover, the next one, in coming to rule edit validate, which is gets executed on client side. So, on refresh of the UI itself, rule edit validate gets executed. So, it is client side validation. Coming to rule OBJ validate, it is going to get executed on click of the submit button in the flow action or maybe we can call in the activity, activity anyhow server side. So, that is how it is going to be a server side validation. And rule edit validate, we are going to call it on property under advanced tab where Wherever we use the property throughout the application, edit validate gets executed. And coming to rule obj validate, we call it on flow action under action tab. So only when that particular flow action is being used, only for one specific user interface, rule obj validate gets executed irrespective of properties being used somewhere else. Uh, without calling it in the flow action under uh, action uh, validation tab, it won't run. So it is specific to only one screen. Okay, this is, these are the main differences and key differences between rule edit validate and rule obj validate at high level. Okay, the next question, what is constraint rule used for? Okay, so declare constraint rule is also for validation. The advantage of using declare constraint rule is, if we are writing the validation logic by using declare constraint rule, there is no need to call this particular rule anywhere because it is a declarative rule. Without calling the rule, it gets invoked automatically throughout the application anywhere, wherever we use the properties that are involved in the declare constraint rules. And coming to this constraint rule, we can have a dependency validation logic being built. That means we can have the when condition uh, for uh, in the first line and in the second line, we can use requires to requires condition. That means one condition, one property value is going to be depending on another property value. This is a type of dependency validation that we are going to perform using declare constraint. So, this is about constraint rule. Okay, the next question, what is continue validation in OBJ validate? Okay, so in rule OBJ validate, for every condition that we are going to add, we have a checkbox called continue validation. The continue validation checkbox is by default always selected. So, that means, suppose if I have five conditions and continue validation button is selected for all five conditions, all five conditions will get executed whenever the rule of validate is being called. For example, if I am going to uncheck continue validation for the third one, then in a form, after entering the entire form, if we click on submit, the validation logic will get executed up to third one. Up to third validation, 
if it is successfully done then only fourth and fifth will get will be get executed otherwise it won't so it is like a break point suppose if you uncheck continue validation for every logic every validation condition that is available in rule of visual validate then for every condition prpc will stop execution of the logic and if the previous one is successfully been validated then only it will go to the next one i like that it is going to validate one by one field in the form that's what continue validation is okay the next question edit validate rule uses java code it must be server side validation okay then how it works on client side validation in pega okay so rule edit validate uses java coding usually java coding means it should get executed on server side right but rule edit validate works as client side validation in pega the reason being pega design is like rule edit validates are being called on refresh of the ui by using an ajax calling okay so that is the ajax calling is been implemented from html code to rule edit validates that's why we are experiencing rule edit validates getting executed on client side itself okay the next question how to return a custom message from the edit validation java program okay so using an edit validate we can return a custom message then what is been provided in the respect to tables in the back end that is a custom message can be drafted by using uh, a method in the edit validate java code that is the property dot add message and in the parentheses we have to write our own message that's how we can return a custom message by using edit validate okay the next question if we call a validate rule and data transform an activity in pre processing flow action which rule gets executed first and what is the order of execution okay if you are going to call a validate rule pre processing data transform and uh, an activity in the flow action first validate rule will get executed after validation rule is been successfully executed without returning any error message then it is going to execute pre processing data transform on successful execution of pre processing data transform finally pre processing activity will get executed on successful execution of pre processing activity screen gets loaded this is the order of execution okay how to call edit validate rule from an activity okay yeah we can call an edit validate rule from an activity by using property validate method there is a method available property validate if you're going to open that expand that method we have an option to call prop choose property and edit validate rules so that's how we can call an edit validate rule from an activity by using property validate method now two questions per viewers test your pega interview skill by answering these questions please post it in this comment section for this video question number 1 is it possible to call edit validate rule from data transform if so how we can achieve this the second question how to make rule obj validate executed on client side please post your answers in comment box please subscribe to our new harsha trainings channel and press the bell icon to get latest updates and the next pega batch will start from august 17 morning 7 am to 8 am ist if you want to join with harsha trainings please call our whatsapp to the scrolling number thank you